Dear friends and faithful believers, we gather today with hearts overflowing with hope, faith, and deep gratitude. It is with these sentiments that we extend a warm and heartfelt welcome to each and every one of you who have joined us on this channel. Whether you come seeking solace, inspiration, or simply to feel connected to the divine, we are united in our journey of faith. May the infinite peace, mercy, and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ fill your hearts and guide your steps always, sustaining you through both trials and triumphs of life. Today, we come together, not just in worship, but in deep reflection, as we bear witness to the devastating events unfolding in the Philippines. A powerful storm has wreaked havoc, triggering landslides and catastrophic flooding in northern regions of the country. The storm, ferocious and unrelenting, claimed the lives of at least 14 people. It descended with heavy rains, transforming once peaceful towns and villages into landscapes of destruction. Overnight into Monday, torrents of water surged through the northern parts of the Philippines, overwhelming communities and forcing people to flee for their safety. In its aftermath, the storm left a path of sorrow and loss, prompting local authorities to take immediate action by suspending school classes and halting government operations in the capital, Manila, and surrounding regions to prioritize the safety of the people. The tropical storm, named Yagi, made its landfall with alarming force, striking the northeastern town of Kasiguran in Aurora province on Monday afternoon. As it tore through the area, its strength intensified, with sustained winds reaching 85 km per hour and gusts up to 105 km per hour, according to reports from the Weather Bureau. These winds and the deluge of rain not only flooded vast areas but also caused landslides that buried homes, obstructed roads, and disrupted the daily lives of thousands. As we reflect on these tragic events, let us remember the power of prayer, community, and our faith in God. While we may not always understand the reasons for such calamities, we trust in the Lord's plan and seek His guidance and comfort for those affected. Let us hold the people of the Philippines close in our prayers, asking for God's mercy and protection over them during this time of trial. May their strength and resilience, bolstered by the love and support of their global brothers and sisters in Christ, lead them through these dark days into brighter tomorrows. The storm, known locally as Anang, intensified as it moved northwest at a speed of 20 km h toward the northernmost provinces of the Philippines. Forecasters predicted that it could strengthen into a typhoon before veering toward southern China within the next two days, according to the Weather Bureau. Tragically, at least 14 lives were lost, with most victims succumbing to landslides and drowning. Among the casualties was a landslide that struck two small shanties on a hillside in Antipolo City, Rizal Province, just west of the capital, resulting in the deaths of three individuals, including a pregnant woman. In another tragic incident, four villagers were swept away by swollen creeks. Ando Bernardo Jr., the disaster information officer of Antipolo, reported that the heavy rains caused the creeks to overflow, triggering a partial collapse of the hillside. Additionally, four residents perished in separate landslides in central Cebu City and northern Samar province, while three more lives were lost in the eastern city of Naga, two from drowning and one from electrocution. Storm warnings were raised across a wide swath of Luzon, the most populous region in the country, including metropolitan Manila, where authorities suspended school classes and government work to prioritize public safety. Along the crowded banks of the Marikina River, situated on the eastern edges of the capital, sirens blared in the morning, alerting thousands of residents to prepare for possible evacuation as the river swelled, threatening to overflow. In the provinces of Cavita, south of Manila, and northern Samar in the central region, 
the Coast Guard deployed rubber boats and ropes to rescue villagers trapped in waist-to-chest high floods. Over 3,300 ferry passengers and cargo workers were stranded as sea travel was suspended in ports affected by the storm. Several domestic flights were also cancelled due to the extreme weather conditions. At Manila's port, a training ship, MV Camila, was struck by another vessel that lost control amid strong waves, causing damage to its bridge and sparking a fire. The 18 cadets and crew aboard were forced to abandon ship, with a passing tugboat rescuing 17 of them, while one individual swam to safety. The heavy downpours also pushed water levels at the IPO Dam in Bulacan Province, north of Manila, to near overflow. Authorities scheduled a controlled release of water on Monday, assuring that it would not endanger downstream villages. The Philippines faces an onslaught of about 20 typhoons and storms each year, exacerbated by its location in the Pacific Ring of Fire, a region highly prone to volcanic eruptions and earthquakes. This geographical reality makes the country one of the most disaster vulnerable in the world. In 2013, the devastating typhoon Haiyan, one of the most powerful cyclones ever recorded, left over 7,300 people dead or missing, destroyed entire villages, and displaced over 5 million individuals in the central Philippines. Amidst the chaos, destruction, and overwhelming grief, the people of the Philippines turned to the comforting arms of faith. In the face of the storm's fury, they lift their prayers to Jesus, seeking his grace and protection. Jesus, the Redeemer, remains the unwavering source of strength and solace for those who trust in him, especially in these dire times. In the Gospels, he demonstrated his divine power by calming the stormy seas. The people now, as then, believe that he will again calm the wrath of nature, shielding them from further catastrophe. The people of Aurora, deeply affected by the flooding, endure in not only the loss of homes and livelihoods but also the weight of fear and uncertainty. Yet, it is in these moments of trial that the love and strength of Jesus become most evident. He reminds us that, no matter how fierce the storms of life may be, we are never alone. In every challenge and sorrow, prayer and faith in Him become the guiding light that leads us through. As we continue to pray for those affected, may we all find peace in the knowledge that Christ walks with us, calming the storms in our hearts and in our world. Many local residents sought refuge in the sacred halls of their churches, gathering together in fervent prayer, their voices raised in unison as they called upon the name of Jesus. Despite the relentless rise of floodwaters, their faith remained steadfast. They believed, with unwavering hearts, that just as Jesus had calmed the tempest and saved his disciples from the stormy sea, he would once again deliver them from this disaster, bringing both salvation and peace to their troubled land. The teachings of Jesus on patience, love, and forgiveness served as a profound reminder of the importance of unity and compassion during such trying times. In the face of danger, many evacuated from their homes, but they were not left to endure these hardships alone. Help came not only from the government and relief organizations but from the surrounding communities. Fellow believers, inspired by Christ's message of love, opened their doors, offering shelter, food, and a renewed sense of hope for the future. In this time of great need, people came together, embodying the Spirit of Christ by supporting one another, sharing what little they had, and lifting each other's spirits in the name of faith. Life on earth is fraught with trials and challenges, a reality that can often leave us feeling vulnerable and lost. Yet, with Jesus by our side, we can find solace in knowing that He is our ever-present guide, our protector in times of uncertainty. The floods that have devastated Aurora Province serve as a stark and sobering reminder of the fragility of human existence. Nature's fury, 
with all its unpredictability, can strip away the material comforts we hold dear in an instant. But in the face of such adversity, we are also presented with an opportunity, a moment to deepen our reliance on God and to strengthen our faith in His infinite power and love. As the waters surged and the storms raged, the people's faith stood as an anchor, grounding them in the knowledge that God's love is enduring, even in the darkest of times. They remembered that Jesus once said, In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. With this promise in mind, the people of Aurora held on to the hope that no matter how fierce the storm, Christ would ultimately lead them to calmer shores. It is in these moments of crisis that we are reminded that true strength comes from our faith in God's unwavering presence and His boundless grace. While the floods may have left destruction in their wake, they also revealed the enduring power of community and the profound impact of faith. Through the simple yet profound acts of kindness, generosity, and prayer, the people of Aurora came together, not only to survive the storm but to emerge from it stronger, with their faith renewed and their hearts filled with gratitude for the love of Christ.